If you want to go ahead and start recording, please, for Kong. Yes. Okay, so thank you and welcome back to the 2023 Virtual Workshop and Hackathon for Physicel. This is session four, where we're going to continue the, the lead, the run that we got this morning, and start building our very first agent-based model using the simulation studio and the language model that we, the modeling language we talked about this morning. So let's let's begin. So our goals for this session is first of all to get some familiarity using the Physicel Studio, and then to build our first model that we're going to start extending a little bit today, and then finish off tomorrow morning, uh, and use this as an opportunity to explore most of the built-in models available in Physicel that you can use in your own models. Uh, remember, these are the the basic behaviors we discussed in last session: things like cycling, death, motility, uh, transport processes. Um, you know, like migration, phagocytosis, and effector attack. You know, these are the things we're going to modulate to build models. And we'll show almost all those basic behaviors uh, in this model that we build in the next few sessions. So the directory structure that I'm going to assume for this uh, for this series of, of sessions is that you have Physicel installed somewhere in its own directory. And then nearby, uh, you have Physicel Studio. And so what I did is I downloaded Physicel from the most recent release, version 113.1, and zipped it, and that makes, in my home directory, and that makes a Physicel directory. And then I downloaded the most recent release as of this morning, a Physicel Studio, version 227.5, and I downloaded and zipped that in my home directory, uh, and that made a folder called this. And then just for my own laziness, I made a symbolic link called PC Studio to link to this current Physicel Studio version so I don't have to type this thing every time I want to get into it. And so if you're on a Linux -y system or on Mac OS, you can type ln-s for a symbolic link, the name of the destination the thing you're linking to, and then the shortcut name, and that'll give you an easier way to access it. And so that's something that I have done. Um, you can also brute force it if you can't make symbolic links and just rename the directory, and that works nicely too. And so if I take a look at things that are in my home directory, you can see that here's my Physicel directory, here's my Physicel Studio directory, and then somewhere over here, here is my symbolic link to that directory. <clears throat> So to get started here today, we're going to go ahead and you know fire things up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change into my Physicel directory. And if you watched the tutorial before, we have a number of makefile rules that can manage projects. We can do make list projects to see a list of all projects that are available. And almost always, you'll be dealing with a template project. So I'm going to type make template to populate that project, which means put all the source files where they belong. And I'm going to type, my, type make one more time to compile that project. And so I start with a fairly clean slate here. So it's going to take me a moment to compile. Uh, but once that's done, then we're going to go ahead and open up the Physicel Studio. And I might just modify this slide over here. I'm not going to full screen load on my uh, full screen mode on my slides just because I'm going to be switching back and forth between slides and a terminal window quite a bit and then Physicel Studio. And so it just there's no reason to do full screen. But if you can't read this, let me know, and I will try to magnify it. OK, so I compiled my project. The next thing I want to do is open up Physicel Studio. Given this assumption of where things are, I can type Python and then dot dot to get into the, and then PC Studio to get into that directory, bin for its binary, and studio.py. And I can hit a little ampersand just to spawn it off as a child process. And that will spin up Physicel Studio in just a second. Here we go. And it's going to give me a warning. And like most people, I don't read the warnings. I just click OK. And here we are in the main Physicel window. So this is great. And just to give you an overview of the arrangement here, so I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, there are a number of tabs that you see in Physicel Studio. The first tab is where you do configuration basics, things like how big is your simulation domain in X, Y, and Z? What are your step sizes? How long do you want to simulate in time? That's this max time field over here. And for multi-threading, how many threads do you want to do for your simulation? 
Uh, those are kind of the most important things. Oh, and where do we want to save our output? In which directory? In this case, uh, I think, where did it go? I'm going to actually go to the real window here. Uh, I'm outputting to output. I think I'm going to up my number of threads up to eight, just for the fun of it. And so thus the configuration basics tab. The next tab is microenvironment. This is where you're going to set things like the diffusible substrates in your environment, you know, oxygen, glucose, whatever you want to do as a diffusible factor, you define it here along with its diffusion coefficients, its initial condition, uh, decay rate, and boundary conditions, eventing. <clears throat> cell types is where we're going to define our cell types. Um, so in these sub tabs are we're going to set the individual properties of those cell types in the absence of rules. Then user parameters, we're not going to use particularly much. Rules is where we're going to define, use that grammar we just talked about to define the rules of how the cell behavioral parameters vary with the signals in the environment. So cell types is where you set kind of the, the base values of all the behaviors for these cell types. And rules is what's going to dynamically modulate them in response to the signals in your environment. ICs is for initial conditions. This is just a rudimentary function, uh, a very nice rudimentary function, to draw some shapes and seed your domain with some of your cell types. Run is where you're going to actually run your simulation. And then plot is where you can do built-in visualization of your model. And so it's, it's kind of a handy one-stop shop. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is that there is Physicel Studio available online in the, the cloud. It may lag a little bit behind the desktop version where most of our development is, but it will be synced fairly often. So if you go to uh, nanohub.org slash tool slash PC Studio, you'll see something that looks almost exactly like Physicel Studio, but in a web tab. It's actually going to be running on a server in San Diego on the NanoHub uh, server. And this is going to be a great environment if you're using it to teach classes and your students can't necessarily log in to install C++. Uh, may not be able to create a development environment. Maybe they can't install uh, Python. Maybe Anaconda is broken for them, which seems to happen more often than it ought to. Uh, well, use Visual Studio in the cloud as your backup. And just about everything you do here, you can do over there. So that's your, your if all else fails, backup option, and also fantastic for education. So we're going to, in the next three sessions, iteratively build up a complex tumor immunology model. Uh, in this session, we'll start with a tumor that uh, grows in response to oxygen consumption with mechanofeedback. Uh, let's see here. And then we're going to have oxygen-driven cycling and hypoxia-driven necrosis. And that'll get us through the model here. And again, if, if we end a little early on this session, we're going to give you guys extra break time. And then we'll just re-enter re the modeling session at, at 3 o'clock Eastern as we need to. But hopefully, we have this timed out about right. So uh, before we go, are there any questions? And thanks for, for Colin for putting the link to the cloud version in the chat window. OK, I'm not seeing any questions, so I'm going to go ahead and keep going here. So we have our window open. And what we want to do is to start uh, developing First of all, we're going to just add oxygen to our environment, start setting some parameter values, and then we will start seeding in the cancer cells. So the very first thing we're going to do is going to start defining the oxygen. And we are going to do that in the microenvironment tab. And before we do much work there, let's work a little bit through the math. Uh, we're going to make use of the diffusion length scale from physics and applied math to help us understand some of the parameter values. Remember that the diffusion length scale is the competition between diffusion, which tends to make things penetrate farther into a tissue, and uptake and decay, which tend to absorb and cut short penetration into tissue. And the balance of those gives you a characteristic penetration distance, or the, or the diffusion length scale, which is the square root of the diffusion coefficient over the sum of anything that's a consumption term. And so in cell-dominated materials, it's going to be d, d over u, because cell uptake is usually much bigger than background decay. And cell-free materials is going to be d over root lambda, for the most part. Now, if you look in the literature for oxygen's diffusion coefficient, uh, notice that I wrote this all in, in terms of microns and minutes, whereas the typical units for diffusion coefficients is in centimeters squared per second. Well, our cells work on the minutes time scale, and our characteristic length scale in simulations is microns. And so we always convert units into microns and minutes for space and time. So be really careful when you look up literature values. 
So if you take the typical literature value for oxygen and turn it into micron square per minute, you get a diffusion coefficient of about 10 to the fifth. I want a length scale of about 100 microns, which is typical for dense cell populated tissues. And uh, assume that L is about tenfold larger. Let's say, oh, um, whoopsie. Actually, not L. So I'm going to make a, <laughs> a correction of my slides here in real time. So, uh, and actually not tenfold. So we're going to just adjust some of these parameter values and just assume that the diffusion length scale is, is much larger in, um, in cell free materials. And we're going to also use uh, literature that says in physiologic or typical tissue conditions, oxygenation is around 5% or 38 millimeters of partial pressure. So let's go ahead and start using these. So notice that we use the diffusion length scale to say, given that I want my length scale to be 100 microns in, in cellular tissues, um, I can back calculate for a characteristic uptake rate to give me that length scale. And likewise, if I want a length scale of 1,000 microns, uh, so maybe that is, uh, this is probably what it really meant, uh, a tenfold larger diffusion length scale in cell free regions. I can say, okay, I want to be a thousand microns over here. And you can back calculate for the U, and it should be about 0.1 minutes inverse. So we're going to go ahead and make use of those. Uh, so let's go into the microenvironment tab in Physicel Studio. And we want to start with the defaults that are already here, and we're going to just start setting them to what we want. So I'm going to double click the substrate, the default name and rename it to oxygen. So double click it, type oxygen, hit enter. And now that field has been renamed. And I'm gonna leave the default coefficient here. This should be 10 to the fifth. But I'm gonna set my decay rate way down to 0 0.1. And this is kind of an important gotcha. If you have oxygen-based birth and death and you forget to give some initial oxygen, then at the very beginning of time, all of your cells are going to see absolutely no oxygen and they're gonna evaluate your rules and a bunch of them are gonna die. So make sure to set an initial condition. So I'm going to set my initial condition to 38 in this case and Dirichlet boundary conditions. So fixed boundary conditions on all four sides. I can just work in 2D for these models just because I want to go a little faster. But these same models should be able to work in 3D. In fact, I should point out that in Physicel, there really is no such thing as 2D. 2D is actually a very, very thin slice of 3D. And is the way we wrote it because the whole thing was written for, for 3D from the ground up. Uh, but 2D is a great place to do fast model prototyping to see what you're happy with with your model assumptions, and then when you're ready, scale up to 3D. Okay, so I'm going to hit Apply to All. I'm going to hit Cover Leaf and Save to save my model. Make sure you leave these checkboxes on so that you can calculate the gradients throughout the domains that cells can do chemotaxis and things like that. And yeah, we're ready with oxygen. Now we want to make sure we set up some tumor cells and get them consuming oxygen. So I'm gonna go here into Physicel Studio again, and I'm gonna go here to the cell types tab and start defining my cell types. So let's see here. So I'm gonna go here to cell types. And the very first thing I'm going to do is double click this default name and rename it to cancer. So double click, type cancer, hit enter. Now I've renamed the cell type. And I am going to use a, there are a variety of cell cycle models available for us to choose from. And so going, you know, some of them more complex, like say flow cytometry separated, which has G0, G1, S, G2, and M. But in our case, we're going to pick just a simple cycle model, it just says that live cells cycle to become live cells. So I'm going to pick that live cell cycle model. And I can either control the transition rates or one over that. The, the, the durations of those cell cycle uh, phases. In this case, I'm going to pick the duration of the cell cycle to be about one day. So on average, 1440 minutes. So I pick the duration representation here, 1440, and that should be that. <clears throat> so now I've got a cancer cell type that cycles at about a one day time scale. And the other thing I need to do is to make sure to tell these tumor cells to consume oxygen. So I'm going to go over here to the secretion tab. This is where we control transport characteristics. 
I'm going to pick oxygen, which is the only available diffusing substrate right now from the drop down menu, and then go and set its uptake rate to 10. And I'm picking 10 because that gives me a 100 micron diffusion length scale within the tumor tissue. So we've got that. And what else do we need to do? Well, we need an initial state. We need some tumor cells if we're going to simulate them. And so I'm going to go here into the initial conditions tab. And I'm going to go and say, let's make an angulus or disc of cells. Let's go ahead and do a full dense hexagonal fill rather than a random fill. And I'm going to pick an, an angulus with the inner radius of zero, which means a disc, and an outer radius of 200 microns. Click the plot tab. And you'll see that this little region of cells of the right type has been added to our domain. Go ahead and click Save now. And that will make sure that we've saved now, basically this is saving under the hood, a comma separated value that has X, Y, Z, cell type, and, and well, that's it actually. And that, that tells you where the cells are placed and we parse that automatically. Uh, but the other thing we need to do, and this is a little bit clumsy perhaps, uh, but you need to go back to config basics and enable this checkbox here to make sure that the cells are actually reading those positions. In a future release, we may move this initial condition tab over to the initial condition tab. Um, that might be a good place to put it in the future, but it works. Okay, so I'm just gonna make sure I've saved my project. So we've set up a diffusing substrate called oxygen. We have created a cell type called cancer and give it about one day cell cycle time. And we made sure that the cancer cells are consuming oxygen uh, with a balance of parameters to make sure that we have about 100 micron length scale inside the tumor. And we set initial condition of a bunch of tumor cells in the center. Uh, the other thing we want to do is go over here to this rarely used user params file uh, tab. And this is where before we had an ability to draw initial conditions, we want to at least randomly seed some tumor cells in the environment. And so this parameter here says that every single cell type will have five cells randomly spaced, but we don't need that since we gave it our own initial condition. So let's just set that to zero. Okay. And let's see, anything else? Well, we've already compiled our model. We've set up our diffusion uh, substrate, the oxygen. We've set up our cell type with a reasonable cell cycle time, and we made sure it consumes oxygen, and we place them in the environment. I think we're ready to run. And so if we type, uh, if we go here to the run type and click run simulation, uh, it has the right name of the executable named project. So it's already running our model right now. Um, right now, this is local on my desktop. And so um, that's cool. While that's running, I want to just point out that this code is available on our GitHub repository for the course. If you go into the, the website and go through and look for the codes for session four, you'll see a folder that has several zip files. So this one's called session04 underscore one dot zip. Take that zip file, save it in your user projects file, and it will be available for you. From there, you can type make Unpack project uh, session one. And the other thing I should have done said is uh, make load proj equals session four, and that will populate it. So this one unpacks it, unzips it basically. This next rule will actually populate that project where it needs to go. Type make one more time to compile it, and you will have all this code available for your own use. And you should be able to load, you know, fire that up from the desktop. Okay, great. Well, I think we've let the code run enough for now. So let's go ahead and look at visualization. So if you go over here to the plot tab, go to the very beginning, basically this is go to the beginning of the simulation, this is go to the end, and these arrows will help us go one frame at a time in between. So that helps us to kind of navigate the time course of the simulation. And we can plot this either by the default SVG, which is basically the default coloring that's spat out by Physicel. You can click on substrates to overlay a diffusion plot. So let's go just a few frames. You can see how we have this Dirichlet boundary condition, this fixed boundary condition around the boundary of 38 millimeters partial pressure. And then it's kind of diffusing slowly because we don't have a lot of cells consuming here. And then you get into the tumor and I can turn those cells off to really show you that really now there's a sharp drop off of oxygen as you get deeper into the tumor. And now if I hit play, I can start animating what we've run so far. You can see this rapid, rapid proliferation and frankly, a non-physical overlap of the cells in the simulation. 
uh, because we need probably some more biology here. And so one thing actually is quite handy is you can color the cells in different ways. So I'm going to go click on the dot mat to say go away from just the built-in coloring. And now I can choose how I want to color the cells. And I can color the cells by pressure, by the mechanical pressure. And we can see that um, on the outer edge of the tumor, the pressure is lower, but it's getting really, really high as we get into the center because all these cells are overlapping one another, causing a humongous and non-physical amount of physical pressure. This tells us we probably need to modify our model, but that can be very handy for you as you start to debug your codes. We can look at other things too. For example, I can go and click on full list to get an even larger list of things I can use to color the cells. So for example, I might want to color by, oh, let's say elapsed time in phase. How long have they been in their current model? And you can see these, that they're exponentially distributed really with most of them here in the dark blue, which makes sense because we gave them a mean duration of 1440 minutes. So if I change my scale here to 1440, we should see that most of them are kind of around here. In fact, maybe if I go twice the average, you should see that they're kind of, a lot of them are hovering around closer to the mean here of 1440. So we can keep playing around with that range if we wanted to, say 700 to 2100 maybe. And let's go maybe a frame or two more. So now I can kind of see that they're all hovering around towards the, you know, somewhere in this range, but on the average, they should be 1440. Okay, and let's just go back to auto ranging. So when you're running, if you say, well, you know, I've seen what I need to see, you can just hit cancel and don't need to finish running the simulation. And we can go back and look a little, a little bit more later. So there was one question in the audience asking if we need to run make GIF or make moving the terminal. Uh, the answer is yes, no. Um, so Physicel in the studio right now can generate these visualizations, but the studio right now does not necessarily export those movies. So if you want to use them somewhere else, uh, that is still something where you might want to do make GIF or make movie uh, in the terminal window. So that I think would be some great functionality to add to Physicel Studio. And we'd certainly love a hand with it uh, if anyone is interested in that. It's a really great question. Um, let's see here. So let's kind of keep going with building this model. <laughs> so, um, you know, one thing that we saw, right, is that we had this really, you know, non-physical overlap of the cells as we got in. And here I'm like humongously overcrowding the simulation. Um, if I double click here and type pressure, it shows up and I can change my plot to pressure. And we have these really high pressures throughout the tumor. This suggests that we need to kind of tweak our biology. And so we're going to add a mechanical feedback now to the simulation. And so, yeah, we have all the cells proliferating regardless of available straight space, regardless of available oxygen. All they're doing is consuming. But remember, we haven't written any rules that say oxygen drives the proliferation behavior. Uh, and so, when you see non-physical behaviors in a model or fail to, or to match be, uh, reality, that means you to conclude that either our hypotheses are wrong or we're missing a hypothesis. In this case, we basically have, have no hypotheses, so it's time to start adding something else. Um, so we're going to add a new hypothesis that mechanical pressure or compression reduces cell cycling or decreases cycle entry. And so just a quick note, in, in Physicel, uh, we have a mathematical form of pressure based on the potentials. This is actually inspired by earlier work by Helen Byrne and Dirk Drasto in matching some uh, continuum and discrete models and using their potential functions as the basis of a pressure definition. And so we have non-dimensionalized our pressure so that it is one for a densely packed but non-overlapping 3D tissue and approximately one half for a confluent 2D tissue. And we're just gonna assume that cancer cells can withstand a little bit more compression compared to other tissues. And so we'll let them go past one half. And so we're gonna add a Hill response function that says that as the pressure increases, our response to pressure is gonna increase. And we'll pick a half maximum in the middle here. So let's use that for an actual rule now that based upon the potentials, we are going to say that pressure decreases cycling. Uh, we're going to use a fairly steep uh, response parameter of, of four and a half max of one. Well, let's instead of talking about it, let's actually just do it. So I'm going to go here to the rules tab. 
I'm going to go and select my cancer cell type. And the signal I'm going to use is pressure. So I'm going to select that. Pressure decreases cycle entry. Oops. I didn't quite manage to select it. There we go, cycle entry. And so we're going to have yeah, pressure decrease cycle entry from the base value. We're going to just assume that it takes it all the way down towards zero. So the, the, the maximal change or the, the saturated response is going from this base value of 0 0.0072 down towards zero. OK, and actually, let's plot that response curve just to see what it looks like. So when oxygen, I'm sorry, yeah, when pressure, oops, I didn't actually that's the good thing to check, right? I'm going to change my half max to one. And let's try to plot that rule again. So here, as pressure increases, you can see that for zero pressure, I have my regular cell cycle entry rate. As pressure gets towards my half max of one, I have my cycle entry rate. And as I get towards higher and higher pressures, I start getting closer to a zero cycle entry rate. And if I pick, for example, a really steep hill power, I would get a much denser response curve. So your choice of power is effectively changing your response curve. So let's just pick this intermediate value of four for now. So I've made this particular thing. I'm going to have a half max of one, saturation value of zero, hill parameter four. I click on add rule to say, now that I've kind of defaulted that rule, I'm going to add it to my list of, of accepted rules. And then click save to make sure that, that rule gets saved to my uh, my CSV file, my rules file. And so uh, we've we've done that, um, adding these things, and you should see this when you're done. And so this is actually another checkpoint in our code. I've saved this as session 04 underscore two, and so you can download that project and expand it. And again, you should do. One more rule over here. And so I will be updating these slides actually after a session. And so that would be how you can easily grab the model that we just built uh, for, your, for your own use. Let's see. So we added a rule. It said that pressure decreases cycle entry. We didn't have to any, write any code. We just had to go through the dialogue and save it to a CSV file. And we actually should be ready now. Uh, the key thing here is to make sure that your rules are enabled. But by default, they are. And I'm going to go here to run and just rerun this model and see what the effect is of our new rule. So this is a nice thing about having Business Cell Studio together with this graphical way of writing method uh, model hypotheses is we can add things one at a time and see what their impact is on the simulation in real time. So we don't have to go and do a whole bunch of coding, debug, compile, debug, 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 fix. We can really change a model very, very quickly and visually see what it does. So let's go back now and plot again. And I'm going to color this by pressure. And see what the impact is. So now we can see that this tumor is growing much, much slower. The pressures are not getting so high. And you can see that uh, we are avoiding that overlap of tumor cells because we have this negative feedback on cycle entry. So there we can see that just adding one rule, one mechanical feedback makes a big, big difference in the behavior of this model. And now this is looking a lot more biologically realistic. You can kind of see these lines of cells appearing. And that is, I suppose, a bit of an artifact of the way we do a potential based adhesion. But overall, we do have these gradients of pressure from the inside to the outside, like we might expect to see. OK. Um, so uh, let's see here. So uh, we can go ahead and continue that. Uh, are there any questions so far on how we've built the model and added this pressure rule? And hopefully you're trying this on your own machines in real time and reaching approximately the same place. But if not, also, of course, you can download all these slides and codes and try them in your copy of Physical Studio. And I hope you do. OK, well, let's go ahead and keep going. Let's keep building our model. So, so far now, we've added this pressure feedback. And we see that we have eliminated that unrealistic, that non-physical behavior of cell overlap. Uh, so adding that one hypothesis made a nice big difference in the way the code works. OK, 
So uh, by the way, too, I should point out that in the built-in studio, there are different ways to visualize. You can pick different coloring, like this V Iridis. Uh, here's like the reverse Iridis. So we can kind of get low pressure on the outside. Here's a reddish coloring. Probably don't want to use the same coloring for substrate and uh, our cells. Turbo. Oh, this is like MATLAB's jet, but more modern, I believe. This is actually a very nice visualization. So we can kind of see it going from blue to red, but with a nice, smoother, non-banded color gradient, which is a little bit more modern. And you can really see how uh, the pressure is accumulating inside. Uh, the other thing you can often see is there will be little pressure spikes whenever a cell proliferates and then imposes forces on its neighbors. And then the tumor will kind of dissipate those mechanical stresses uh, over time as the cells shuffle and move each other around. And so you'll see these hot spots near proliferation events. And then here's a death event over here. You can see that actually surrounding a, a death, that actually relieves the local pressure and starts to go down a little bit. Uh, so there was a question about how we the new rules are stored. They are, they are stored in a CSV file. Uh, in this case, that CSV file is called rules0.csv is just the name of it. And that's a great question. So I'm going to go into the config directory. These rules right now are stored in this intermediate form. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Oh, stupid Apple. It wants to open it up in some stupid spreadsheet. Um, OK, let's instead grep dot rule zero. So right now, it's just a single line in a text file in my config directory that says the name of the cell type, the signal, the direction of the behavior, the behavior I'm modulating, and then let's see here, the, uh, the saturated value, half max, hill power, and then one more flag that says whether I apply this rule to dead cells or not. And as we add more rules, we'll get more lines in this file. So that's a really good question. Okay. So let's go ahead and keep building our model. Now, thanks for your great question. So, so far we have cells that are now using a mechanical feedback to avoid the non-physical behavior. They're consuming oxygen, but they're really not doing anything with it yet. So let's start making this a little bit more biologically realistic by having the oxygen drive the cycle entry of the cells as well. And so uh, let's see here. Uh, so kind of additively, we're going to add oxygen-driven cycling. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use oxygen availability, uh, basically the extracellular concentration, as a proxy of en cell energy production, so assuming that the more oxygen and glucose substrates you have, the faster the cells can make energy, the faster they can make energy, the more easily they can make everything they need to make and enter into the cell cycle. So it's basically a proxy of energy when you got down to it. Uh, and so we're going to modify our phenotypes. So what we want to do is to make sure that in the absence of oxygen, that the cells aren't cycling. And that then as the oxygen increases, you want the cycle entry rate to increase. So the very first thing we need to do is go back over. Let's make sure we're not running anymore. Uh, let's go back to our cell types and go to the cell cycle subtab. And let's change our base behavior so that in the absence of oxygen, they don't have that, ox that energy and they're not entering the cycle. And so I'm going to go here, and first of all, I'm going to change from the duration representation of saying what's the mean duration of that phase to the transition rate, which is equivalently one over the, trend, the duration. And I want to say that in the absence of oxygen, they have a zero cycling rate. So that's going to be our, our starting point. The next thing I'm going to do is start adding the rule. So I'm going to go here to the rules tab again, and I'm just going to go through the same kind of thing. The cell type of modulating is for cancer cells. Oxygen is a signal that is going to increase cycle entry. And I'm going to go from, now this has not updated with my new value, it seems like. Uh, but the saturated value is going to be this 0 0.000, now 72, I suppose. 7 is what I plan to use. And let's do a half max of 21.5 millimeters of partial pressure. Uh, Let's plot that to kind of get a reason why. OK, uh, the code is wrong, actually. It is arguing with me on something that's Paul, not. Okay. Paul, just, <clears throat> Paul, just change the behavior and uh, come back for another behavior. 
I'm sorry. In the rules tab, uh -huh. just change the behavior for the cell cycle, cell entry for another one, come back for the cell oh, entry. Oh, and then go back. That you updated. Value. Ah, yeah. thank you for the trick. Now it has repopulated the base value and now the sanity check is sane. Thank you, that's really helpful. Uh, cool, and now I can plot this value. So we can see in our response curve that when auction is close to physiosic conditions, I'm at my, my, near my maximum cycle entry rate, as I get down towards 21.5, my half max, I'm at half my cycle entry rate. Then as I get towards lower values, I'm at near zero. And actually we chose these values to match some of our earlier models where uh, when you get below seven or so millimeters of partial pressure, you're in deeply hypoxic territory and you should have almost no cycle entry. So that's why we picked these particular values. And maybe in some of the optional sessions, we can talk a bit more about how we might think about choosing some of these values. If we go ahead and click on add rule, and let's make sure that I save my model. And that's it. I've added a new hypothesis, no code required. Initial conditions are still fine. Let's just go and click on run. Now I just want to get back to that earlier question. I'm going to open up my terminal window and look at that rules file again. And you see that now there's a second line in my rules file for this new rule that for cancer cells, auction increases cycle entry towards a maximum value of this thing with a half max and the hill power. And this rule is not applied to dead cells. And we can go ahead and plot this now. Let's going to go back to the SVG plot for now. We can see that cells are you know, proliferating a little bit more on the outer edge. And one thing we may want to do is we can look at other things to plot to get a better sense of how this is behaving. And so if we go here into uh, MAT and click on the full list of things that we can plot, let's go ahead and choose the current cycle phase uh, exit rate. So if cells are in phase zero that they're cycling, then this will give them their, their basic their cycle entry rate. And I can plot them by this color. Now, here I'm going to override the, the range that it chose. And I'm going to go between zero and my maximum rate of 0. 0.0007. And so now we can see that between the pressure and the oxygen, we have restricted that cycling. Uh, and the greatest cycling is on the outer edge of the tumor with the mechano regulation as well. And it's growing pretty much the way we expect most of these models to work now. Uh, so choosing different things in this visualization could be really, really helpful uh, for digging in and seeing how your model is working. Uh, most of these are gonna leave alone for now. Huh? We can plot number of nuclei. They all have one nucleus, yay. There's been no cell fusions. Uh, so over time, I think we're gonna continue modulating and, and refining all the things we can do for visualization. Okay, so that model now has mechanical feedback that pressure down regulates uh, cycle entry, that auction increases cycle entry from a base value of zero now rather than a default value. And we're starting to get something that looks a little bit more biologic. Uh, are there any questions before we go on to the next part of our model? Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going. Uh, we are actually being very efficient. Um, so we may win some time back again here today because we have budgeted all the way up to 2.30 for this session, but these models are easier to write than they used to be. So we may not need the full 90 minutes. So let's add oxygen-driven uh, necrosis now. And so uh, to do that, we need to do a little bit of rephrasing. This is a little bit tricky. So for that, I want to really deeply apologize. Uh, and then we're working on it. I think that this can be a refinement in the next version of the language. Here's the statement that we would like to make, that increasing hypoxia or low oxygen increases necrotic cell death. But there is no low oxygen uh, symbol in our dictionary. And so we have to turn the statement around a little bit and say, rather, you know, basically you have to kind of imagine the response curve you want, that as oxygen goes down, the necrosis rate goes up. So for low values, necrosis is up, and then it kind of curves around down. 
And so one way you can think of that is saying is rather than low, rather than traversing that graph from right to left, as we kind of intuitively do, let's traverse that graph from left to right. And going from left to right, necrosis starts high, and then as oxygen increases, necrosis goes low. So the thing, way to think of this rule is that increasing oxygen decreases necrosis. So to make it work, you start with a high necrosis value when you're in the absence of that signal, when there's no oxygen, really high necrosis rate. And then as the oxygen increases, necrosis goes down. And we're going to say that above five millimeters partial pressure is kind of when you've gone from really low oxygen to kind of hypoxic conditions uh, that you basically eliminated necrosis. So let's turn that into our code. So we have to do two things. We have to turn up a relatively high necrosis rate as a base behavior. So let's go over here to the cell types again. And let's go to the death model. And we can change the apoptotic death rate or the necrotic death rate. We're going to work on this one. And I'm going to pick a default value of, of, of 3 e negative 3. So 3 times the negative third power. That will give you basically the mean survival time when there's absolutely zero oxygen available. And one over that is on the order of 330 minutes. So they can basically, they can, they can eke it out and survive for a few hours, for about, uh, as a, I guess, about five hours, five and a half hours before they die. So that's uh, there. And now we have to add the rule. So we're going to go to the rules tab. I'm going to go and say for cancer cells, it's the only type I have right now, that oxygen is my signal and it is going to decrease. And what is it going to decrease? Necrosis. So I can, I can double click this field and type, start typing until I complete the signal or the behavior necrosis. And so we're going to say that oxygen decreases necrosis. And let's see, the saturating value that says the value under the maximum effect of that rule is going to be zero. So I start at a high necrosis rate, 3e negative 3, and go down to a very low necrosis rate of zero as I increase my oxygen. And I'm going to pick a half max just by experience of 3.75 millimeters partial pressure. And let's plot that for a moment. This says that when oxygen is very low at zero, I have this high necrosis rate. As I get towards 3.75, which I kind of picked to be halfway through a transition zone, my, I've reached my half max, which means I've halved my necrosis rate or I've had half my reducing effect. And as I get higher and higher and higher still, at you know, double 3.75 now, uh, seven and a half, I'm down to very little necrosis, but still a non-zero rate. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this a steeper response curve. And so I'm gonna change my hill power to eight. So, Randy, you guys are geniuses for adding the built-in plotting. It is so helpful to visualize these rules as you build them. Uh, now, right, you can see how we have a much steeper response curve, that when oxygen is below about two and a half, I have basically maxed out my necrosis. This acts a lot like the old physicist cell models that had the linear response curve. Now, between two and a half or so and seven and a half, now I have this rapidly increasing necros uh, re decreasing necrosis, until when I get up to, you know, past five, seven and a half millimeters of partial pressure, I have basically no necrosis. That looks pretty good. So I'll click on the add roll button and make sure to save it. And I should be ready to go. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a more interesting boundary condition, uh, just so I can kind of see a little bit more necrosis. So I'm going to go here to the microenvironment tab, and I'm going to say on the left boundary and on the bottom boundary, I'm going to just reduce this to 10 millimeters of partial pressure. And you know what? I think I'm going to go even lower. Let's go with like five or something. So let's go ahead and go with that and see what it does. We'll click on run. Will that get started? And we'll go to the thought tab. And let's just do the SVG plot for the moment. I'm going to go one frame just to show you. You can see how our boundary condition applied. It's five millimeters partial pressure on these two boundaries and 38 on these two, and we have this nice sharp oxygen gradient in between, and where there are cells, it's absorbing oxygen even faster, or consuming it, so we get this emergence of a very uh, steep drop-off now. Let's go ahead and put the cells back on. And you see now we're coloring the cells that they are black where they're apoptotic and brown where they're necrotic. So you can see where the oxygen is lower, we're getting this necrosis. And when the oxygen is higher, we're gonna get more proliferation. 
which is kind of what we told them to do. So that's a good sign. Uh, let's take a look more at our visualization again. Let's look at that cycle entry rate. So click full list so I can get access to that variable. Uh, let's see here, current cycle exit phase. Let's click that. So yeah, I can see now how most proliferation is here on this forward edge where it's closest to the option. So that's, that makes sense. And you can see this like net growth in this direction towards that higher auctionated boundary. The saying is still running, good. Let's see, what else can we plot? We could plot the necrotic death rate. And that would probably be helpful to look at how that's bearing. Damage dead. We may not, I think we need to add that symbol yet. There might be another way to look at current death model, I think. Yeah, let's try that. Well, we may need to uh, add some symbols in the future, uh, but this is really cool. Yeah, one thing we could look at later is perhaps looking at that death rate. I think though, I thought I saw it in here once. Yeah, death rate zero is the apoptotic death rate. Notice that all the cells have the same apoptotic death rate because we don't have any rules that dynamically modulate apoptotic death. Whereas the necrotic death rate, this should be varying. And so I'm gonna just do the auto range. Oh yeah, this is cool. Randy, you guys rock. Um, see how here at the very back edge of the tumor where the oxygen is lowest, you have the peak in the necrotic death rate and then it, it decreases across the tumor. So you can actually see dynamically uh, the effect of your rule that uh, this you get this variation of necrotic death rate with position and with local oxygen conditions, exactly like we told it to. That's always encouraging when the when your little cells do what you told them to do. So they're they're good good little cells. Um, so now we have a tumor growth model where we have mechanofeedback to reduce cell cycle entry to avoid non-physical overlap. We have oxygen-driven cell cycle entry, a little bit like most tumor growth models out there. Uh, and then we had added an additional rule that says that low oxygen will increase necrosis, or the, the opposite of that, or actually the, the, the codable version of that is that oxygen prevents necrosis. And so we've reached a pretty good place. Actually, I am way ahead of our pace. Um, we, this model used to take a lot longer to build. And so we built a lot of time into our agenda for it, um, not realizing we would be this far ahead. So I'm happy to open to questions. And we have two choices. We could either continue to the next session right now, or we could take a longer break and restart at the scheduled time for the next session. What do you guys prefer to do? Can you stop recording for a minute for Khan? Looks like I'm going to do that.